One Piece. This is One Piece chapter 1066, The Will O of Ohara. Um, Alternate title, Hype Fest 2022. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, last we left off with uh, One Piece. Uh, the Straw Hats are currently on the future island of Egghead. We've met pretty much all of the different uh, incarnations of Vegapunk at this point. And uh, they are just the Straw Hats that are with uh, Shaka, the first Vegapunk, I guess, uh, which are Robin, Frankie, uh, Usopp, and Nami, right? Sanji as well. Uh, They're with Vegapunk 1, Shaka, and he's pretty much kind of uh, relay is about to relay uh, some super cool lore related to the Void Sentry. Um, and that's where we left off this chapter. We we're going to start off with a little cover page update. Uh, we see that the cover page story is back. And, um, in this one, we see that the, um, the Vince smoke siblings, uh, are arrived back at the Germa, uh, battleship country thing with, uh, Caesar clown in tow. So we're going to have to see how that works out. Uh, and we open with the chapter proper where the straw hats are very much like us being like, what the fuck are you talking about with this ancient island with ancient technology? Uh, like, what? what is that? The past? <laughs> the past? Uh, it's ancient future? Yeah. And um, Vegapunk explains that there once was a man who gave his life to archaeology and uh, brought that kingdom's existence to light. Uh, and that timeline matches up with this uh, with this certain machine that was discovered elsewhere and uh, when it was pr- originally produced. And Robin asks him if this machine was made during the Void Century. Uh, and uh, Vegapunk is like, hmm, how much do you know exactly? Um, and he continues to explain, he's like, I know that, you know, O'Hara was uh, leveled by a buster call 22 years ago. Uh, and he suspects it's because they found out the truth uh, about um, everything that's been going on with the military's cover-up of whatever happened uh, during the Void Century. And uh, Vegapunk relays that uh, the Void Century, as it's called, is a history of war uh, between this extremely advanced civilization of the past and a group of 20 kingdoms. So all 20 of these kingdoms jumped this one country, uh, which is pretty wild to think about. And... Uh, in order to ensure that the ideals of the ancient kingdom could not be passed down, they erased all traces of it from history. Uh, and the hey. straw, the straw hats are, have varying degrees of uh, reactions like, what the fuck? And uh, Sanji asks the questions like, wait, doesn't that mean that everybody who's learned about this is like, he's like, yep, we'll be illuminated. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, er, you know, people, Usopp just has the Usopp reaction of, why'd you fucking tell us that? <laughs> god damn it why'd you say it um and uh he he turns over to robin and he says if ohara was definitely indeed wiped out over this theory then that would mean that the government essentially admitted that it was true uh Mm. and robin is like in what capacity are you speaking here because the scholars of ohara had to like perform painstaking research on precious ancient texts to arrive at that theory So with your status, couldn't you just learn it from the government yourself? Why do you need me to confirm it one way or the other? And uh, Vegapunk is obviously like, well, no, just because I'm affiliated with the government doesn't mean they tell me everything. Um, So, you know, even I could be eliminated for uh, just for talking about it. Uh, And Robin asked was like, well, if that's true, then how did you know about the ancient kingdom? All the text in Ohara, uh, have been destroyed and he's like the will of ohara lives and he explains that apparently he knew clover from a while back um he uh so you know after he heard that uh clover was killed he went over to ohara uh to pay his respects uh we learned that clover actually traveled the world and you know, was uh, was searching for ancient texts all over the place. He seemed to be a captain of a ship, maybe not of pirates, but just explorers in general. Um, and apparently he was arrested by the Navy and broke out of prison 10 whole times. 
Uh, That's crazy. Yeah, so I guess Clover was strong back in the day. That's not an easy thing to do. Uh, no. And uh, it turns out when Vegapunk arrived... The Kaido of Explorers. Yeah, the Kaido of Explorers, for sure. Um, it turns out when uh, when Vegapunk went over to Ohara to pay his respects to Clover, uh, he noticed that there was just this massive lake in the center of the island that was just full of papers uh, and, and, and books and all that stuff. And it turns out to be all of the research that the uh, that Ohara has made uh, over the years, and uh, he suspects that after the Buster called, the military never even bothered to fucking explore Ohara to look for the to to look for any trace of their research, uh, and that led to um, pretty much everything being preserved. Uh, Ohara lost the battle but won the war in a way. Because all of their research survived them, um, right? And at that point, and Robin, it's on yeah. At that point, Robin starts having flashbacks about her past. You know, we we get uh, remembrance of her uh, daughter, of her mother, uh, Olivia, I think her name is, or Olivia. Um, and we get a remembrance of Saul, the giant from the military, the former military giant that uh, stole her away and saved her life, basically. Um, and she starts, you know, crying, you know, obviously this is painful. She's remembering the genocide of her people. Um, uh, and, um, he's basically like, so just as suspected you oh, uh, uncovered the existence of the ancient kingdom. And he's, and that's also confirmation to Vegapunk that it is in fact real. Um, and he traveled to Ohara with the specific intention of collecting all of the papers that he found and bringing them with but then he realized that, like, uh, well, if I heard, if my superiors have heard about it, all of what would have been lost. But then he realized that he encountered quite a combination of people that day. And we actually get a flashback to 22 years ago, months after the incident, uh, the Buster Call incident. And um, we see uh, as uh, Vegapunk is looking on uh, a group of giants fishing the uh, texts out of the water. And as that's happening, uh, he also gets uh, called uh, uh, by surprise to by Monkey D Dragon. At this point, who is 33 years old, he has no face tattoo. Uh, that's interesting. He has the design of the tattoo on his leg, if you notice that. So, yeah, there is a little bit of a significance there. I'm sure that we'll get an explanation as to why he has it on his face now. Um so, yeah, uh, Dragon turns out, at that time, he was 33 years old, captain of the Freedom Fighters. I guess they weren't known as the Revolutionary Army at that time. Um, but, yeah, he pulls up because he knew Clover as well. And um, he also came by to pay his respects. Um, so And they're both basically unlooking the giants taking the texts. And I guess they just kind of decided to let them have it. They're not thieves and you know it's probably safer to right. them. It's safer with them. Uh Dragon looked into them taking the text and he seems to trust them with him with with these texts. So uh he apparently he seems to have talked to their captain who was a man covered in bandages. Uh and um they're basically they continue their conversation. Dragon expresses that he uh that it made him sick to know that Vegapunk was a, is apparently working for the Navy at this point, uh, to which Vegapunk mm -hmm. says, don't be stupid. What would my e intellect and expertise achieve with an impoverished na military force like yours? And uh, he's like, well, you always were honest, I guess. That's the Lilith in him talking, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, basically, uh, he's like, the world government is a massive organization, and, and within the ma Navy in particular, there's still... Uh, many reasonable people to be found. Don't lose sight of the gold dragon. I think that's more important than we think. Uh, but in any case, um, we they're they're sitting down in front of what I imagine is uh, Clover's grave there, or they make like a little grave for O'Hara in general, not just Clover. Mm -hmm. um, and they are sitting there talking about how like this could happen. You know, they were basically a group of like powerless academics that were just obliterated by extreme violence and that uh dragon here vows that he will m create a military force that can actually fight back 
Um, Vegapunk notes that like you will, despite your hatred of war. And he's like, I'll see to it that Clover's death and Ohara's will do not go to waste. And then shortly after that, he joined up with even cough and, and Kuma and they created the, uh, revolution army that, that exists today. Um, but yeah, and after that, it's revealed that um, Vegapunk shortly visited Elbaf himself to go read the texts, which he did. Uh, we see a little shadowy, familiar figure. We don't see his face, but we know that figure. And um, Vegapunk read all of the texts left behind by o- Ohara and has memorized the entire thing. It's completely in his brain. And um, Robin is just like that giant captain. His name was Saul, right? And Vegapunk doesn't say yes, but he doesn't say no either. He says that he's currently in hiding, <laughs> and I could not tell you more. And uh, that causes Robin to cry tears of joy. Um, very nice little moment for her. Uh, and um, they thank him, you know, just to kind of in- for ensuring that uh, Ohara's battle was not in ta- wasn't in vain, and. Uh, uh, Vegapunk's like, well, you know, I'm just a guy who studies a lot, and I'm a. Uh, this is the nature of a scholar. And then he starts like pulling the straw hats over with him as he continues to walk forward towards the lab. And he says, "I can't let you go, but you may come with me. I have something to show you." Um, and then we cut back to the scrap heap where Luffy, Chopper, Bonnie, and Jimbei were, as they're now looking at this giant, weird mecha. That is sitting in the middle of uh, the scrap heap. Um, I thought it was a giant. Hmm? I thought it was a giant. No, <laughs> it's just like this probably armor, probably mecha thing. Um, and there's this like giant explosion seems to like ring out from the giant robot. And um, the next panel, we see an old man halfway stuck inside of this robot. Kind of like reminiscent of Keenanmon. Or Mirio. Or Mirio. <laughs> <laughs> and he's requesting help instead of request. Um, and Luffy basically pulls him out of this half robot. Uh, this guy has obviously got a very distinct character design, so we know who he is to begin with. Um, uh-huh. And uh, he's like, oh, you're Dragon Son, aren't you? I knew you were here. And uh, he turns over to Bonnie. He's like, Bonnie, how much you've grown. Um, And he's like, you're floating. And he's like, yeah, my Dom shoes have a big hover function. You could do this, that, and this, and that. And then boom. And he activates all of their hover functions at once, sending them flying. And we get a a full page, uh, uh, not full page, but like a big two page spread panel of how Vegapunk looks like now. His head is significantly smaller now. And it's kind of, topped off with this weird apple top thing this apple top <laughs> i don't know what the hell it is uh his but... brain is gone yeah <laughs> and uh yeah that's that's where we end uh that was uh this chapter uh obviously a lot is being revealed but at the same time not a lot is being revealed so um i'm gonna throw it over to josh josh what did you think about one piece chapter 1066 Yo, the real Vegapunk's head looks like a chocolate eclair. <laughs> like, his whole shit looked cream filled. Yeah. In here. Like, what? Wh- why did they do that? Why did, was, yo, Oda has issues. When I seen him stand, this this character standing and looking at the, uh, the tree, I thought that was emu or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, God, oh, man. It's one of these guys. That's a good. That's a good catch. I guess he does have like a emu is kind of like that in a way. Yeah, He's like, like why is he standing there looking all tall and weird? Yeah, he must be super important. Oh yeah, <laughs> and ended up. Well, he is important. He's this is Doctor. This is the Doctor Vegapunk. Yeah, but wow, his fucking cranium. How did you guys feel about that? His cranium. This is a yeah. Well, you know, this is a very. Oda's is just like probably the best at character designs in general, just because no two characters look the same. And, uh, well, you know, I guess if, unless you're like a woman and he draws a lot of women like Nami, but right outside of that, 
you know, he's got some very right, unique character tongue. designs. Did I expect him to look like on? this? No, <laughs> but I don't hate it. I think it's a, a, a very interesting design. I don't know why his tongue is sticking out like that. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you that a lot of people are upset with how he looks. <laughs> man, people got to get off it, man. A lot of people yeah, feel like different a, designs. A lot of people feel betrayed. Well, a lot of people <laughs> apparently have been reading One Piece for 1066 chapters. They They're like, we've been, they've been building this character up for so long, and you, you can't just, Oda can just give us one cool looking character. First of all, <laughs> Vegapunk technically has seven different character designs. Yeah. If yeah, like really Shaka looks pretty it. fucking cool. Shaka looks cool. Right. Lilith looks cool. Uh, Ash, um, Atlas looks cool. They all look cool. And they're all one person. He, and he's obviously modeled after Einstein. Yeah, he has the little mustache. Yeah. And uh, the tongue being out is also... Um, yeah, the, uh, that's what Einstein it is. Thing. Einstein had a wow, photo where he had right. his tongue out. Damn, I can't believe I didn't catch that. Oh. Good catch, Brian. Damn, I can't believe I didn't catch wow. that. Anyway, what did you think he looked like, you know? He's an old man. I'm cool with it. Very One yeah. Piece esque character design. I love it. I I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, I don't know, Josh. Did you have any th other thoughts about the chapter? No, I mean, all I can think about is how big this guy's head is. Is that because of his brain? He's so smart. Yeah. Maybe he, when he went to Albaf to read all of the shit, he his head was about to explode, so he had to split it up, and that's how Maybe. he got Shaka. Maybe and then the others. Oh, that's actually a good theory. Yeah. Way too much information. Way too much. He was like giant. Oh, you know what else I thought? Guys, there was four fucking things mentioned in this chapter. Okay? Elbaf. Ohara. Dragon. And the Void Century. My. We are in a renaissance right now. <laughs> yeah. What? This is the Lore end, renaissance. Oh, man. I, I'm so here for it, man. Um, Brian, did you really have any? Enjoy it. Brian, did you have any thoughts? Um. All right. So, I have a a few thoughts actually. Um. So when it comes to the whole Vega Punk thing, um, I think. It's interesting that his head is so big because that's the same thing. So that means he's kind of the same race as uh, Fukuro Kuju, right? Fukuro Kuju? Yeah, you you know the big headed guy from Wano? Oh, nope. uh, I don't know. I don't think that's like a specific thing. I think that's just, that was just a design thing on his part. Because no, because. And also, the aliens also have big heads as well on the moon. So there's that as you well. Think so? I don't. I don't remember. They yeah, were they tiny do. Guys, and and oh. uh thing. Could we have a fifth reference? So Enru, Enru, the aliens that Enru see are also big headed, like Vegapunk. Vegapunk's head is enlarged. Fukuda Kuju's head is enlarged the same way, except. Uh, of course, Vegapunks is bigger. Um, so there has to be a connection between this kind of stuff. You know, I feel like him having such a big head that way seems to not be a coincidence. They don't have big heads. I'm looking at them right now. They're tiny little weird robot creatures. No, some of them do. Those are just the robots that they created. But there are other ones like that he's fighting oh. or that he organized. Uh, Andrew was not on Raftel. I'm gonna be so sick. Well, those guys just had be. a big hat. They didn't have like big heads. Yeah, they have a big head under it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty sure. I'm looking at them. Big heads. I haven't seen a one with a giant head. I only see the one with big hat, and I think that's just a hat. We'll see about that. But <laughs> we'll um. See. 
I do think that space has to play a part in this at some point. Um, just because. Oh, Josh, your you know. out. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I got a phone call. So. Oh, okay. Just because it has to come into play eventually. Uh, all the stuff going on in space. Yeah. I don't, I don't imagine Otis setting that up for nothing. Um, all right. Uh, were those all your thoughts? Um, yeah, it was a pretty big chapter when it comes to like the reveals and stuff. And th- this is basically the origin story for the revolutionaries, which is pretty fucking massive. And I kind of hope that we get more of the revolutionaries from here on out. Like, I hope we actually see them in Elbaf or we finally get an encounter between the Straw Hats and Dragon at Elbaf. That would be fucking amazing. Um, that would be cool. Just because they're setting up Elbaf to be this big fucking deal now, which it is, and I'm excited for it. So, bring it here. Oh, Give yeah. me more Elbaf. Same. Uh, well, obviously, massive chapter overall. There's a lot of uh, little things that I really liked. I really loved robin getting a chance to be happy you know uh the idea that saul's alive is really fucking cool when i read that i was like oh shit because we i guess we never really did see him die we saw him get frozen but that's about it Um, oh yeah i'll keep you frozen and uh, you know what's funny um i think the ability that he used on saul was called time capsule it's called ice time Oh, ice time. Okay, so yeah, it it feel like it wasn't a very menacing sounding attack when you really think about it. Yeah, and I don't think Aokiji would just like kill someone in cold blood. I obviously Aokiji is always cold been... blood. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> no. Uh, I mean, you know, Aokiji's been like kind of a weird, uh, morally gray person for a while so it is interesting that he hasn't he didn't kill Saul that's nice of him to be honest um very excited to see how this leads I'm very excited to see Saul again Vegapunk I mean on his design very cool design to be honest I have no problems with it uh it's it is just like a really goofy one piece design and that tracks you know I love that what what Brian pointed out about him looking like that picture of Einstein blew my mind. And I'm like, Oh damn, I see it now. I can't believe I didn't see it before. Um, one thing I will say, I think Shaka saying like, you know, I have, I have something to show you is a little more menacing than it seems. I don't know if you guys get that vibe at all. No, I don't think so. I don't think it's menacing. Yeah. Uh, Uh, isn't he Shaka the good? Mm, yeah, I feel like that's a misdirect, though. You know what I mean? Mm, maybe you know he's a shy- about, You know what I'm saying? No, I, mean? no, I think there's a possibility he's a shice lord. He was keeping <laughs> yeah, them locked shice up lord. on the boots. For what? Was he scared of uh, Sanji kicking him in his face? Maybe. He could be. Maybe. Um. But yeah. Brian, I think I'm coming through in an echo on your headphones again. Sorry. Um, but in any case... Yeah, I, I think that's all I had to say. Just a lovely, lovely chapter. This was my RGC, by the way, I think. Um, I don't know about you guys, but this was my really good chapter of the week. Anybody else? Yeah, I'll give it to this. All right, me and Brian. Uh, this was uh, me and Brian's really good chapter of the week. Certified RGC. Certified RGC. Certified all right, all right, all right. I got it. Wait, what? I gotta give it to One Piece. All right, you know you gotta fucking say it. <laughs> this is the unified. No, because I was it was tough, man. Because man, Jujutsu Kaisen was really good. Yeah, I no, I mean there were a lot of good. But were, um, it had stiff competition. No, this was come on, it, the, Dragon Two, and Dragon. Come on, and Dragon. I all of that. No, you got and do. and they had Usopp say, "Did you mention Elbaf? Come on, it's next." It's next. It's next. We knew it's it. It's the next time. Everybody knew it. So, um, but all right, whatever. This is a huh? I knew it. Yeah, we all knew it. This is um our unified really good chapter of the week then. Unified RGC. Unified RGC.
I love hearing the One Piece yeah. trumpet. Yeah, it's the Frankie theme song, actually. Adds character. Um, I, yeah, I mean, we told you guys that if uh, once One Piece got into its lore phase, its lore era, it, it was probably going to win Unifieds all week, every week. Uh, I'm very excited for it, to be honest. Did the audience vote? The audience did vote. They did not. One Piece did not win the audience vote. Okay. Something else did.